Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and today I'll be showing you how to perfectly place text and objects in 3D perspective using a really awesome trick inside of GIMP. I'm using GIMP version 2.10.30, which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before we get into that guys, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. And you can get more by becoming a DMD premium member and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Here is the composition we'll be creating for today's tutorial. As you can see, I've got this question mark here, this piece of text placed perfectly on this pier. But also we've got the matching texture going on here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that super simple for starters we're going to open up the image i used here and i can do that by going to file open and find it on my computer or go to open recent in my case and choose the photo i want to use i'll convert this to gimps native srgb color space this is a free stock photo i will include a link to this in the description of the video but now what i'll do is create the vanishing point for this so that's going to be the main trick is finding and creating the vanishing point a vanishing point is just the point at which two parallel lines in a photo converge on a single point. So what I'll do is come over here to my layers panel and I'm going to click to create a new layer. And you guys might have your layers panel down here. I have a kind of new setup going on today. But the layer name for this, I'm just gonna name it VP for vanishing point and make sure it's filled with transparency and click okay. So there's our vanishing point layer. Next, what I'll do is grab my paintbrush tool here from the toolbox. You can use the P key on your keyboard. And I have this set to a pretty small brush size. So the size slider here is set to around five right now. And the hardness doesn't really matter. You can turn it all the way up if you want. And usually I have my paintbrush color here set to white. So I can hit the X key to switch that over to white. And now what I'll do is I'm going to follow these lines here to the start and I'm going to click and then if I hold the shift key, it'll draw in straight line mode. And I'm just going to make sure the line follows that line vanishing into the distance. And then I'm going to come over here to a similar line. And this one's one, two, three, one, two, three. So this one's probably fine. Click, hold the shift key and follow that line once again. So right here is our vanishing point. I'll just circle that. Control Z to undo. So this is going to be the point we're gonna mark so that we can set a vanishing point using one of our transform tools as you'll see momentarily. So what I'll do to mark this is come over to the rulers and just click and drag a guide and drop it right there on the vanishing point. And we'll do the same here for the horizontal guide. And if I hit the M key and hold control and zoom in, I can hover over the middle to drag both of these and place it right there. So there's our vanishing point. So next I'm going to grab my text tool. So T on the keyboard or come over here to your toolbox, grab the text tool. And I'm just going to click on my composition and hold shift and type the question mark. So you can see the font I'm using is Abrima Bold. You can change the font over here, click on this icon, click on the ABC icon and scroll through the fonts here in the fonts dialog. So let's come back over to the layers panel. So I'm just going to make sure I have my text selected here. You'll know it's selected because you have the yellow outline around it. And I'm going to increase the size of this. So let's go with 500. If I hold the Alt key with the text tool and drag this up, we can move our text. So I want this to be probably much larger. So let's go 750. So that looks fine for now. All right, so we've got our text, we've got our vanishing point. Now we need to place the text on the perspective pier here, and then of course add some texture to it. But let's focus first on getting this layer set up for a 3D transformation. So first I'm going to crop the layer down to the size of the text. So to do that, make sure you're on the text layer and go to layer, crop to content. So that'll crop it down. Now I'm gonna hit the M key on my keyboard and just click and drag this until it snaps to the center of the guides there. Make sure guide snapping is turned on by going to view, snap to guides. All right, so now that this is set up, we can come over here and hide the vanishing point. And once that's hidden, we can now perform our transformation on this. So I can hit shift W 
And that's going to grab my 3D transform tool here. You can click and hold on the transform group and release your mouse on the 3D transform. And over here we have the 3D transform dialog. I'm not going to go through all the 3D transform tool settings because I do that in my GIMP masterclass. Definitely enroll in the GIMP masterclass if you're interested in learning everything about this tool. But what I will do is come over here and make sure unified interaction is turned on. And I'll hold control zoom in. So this is our vanishing point. Because we have our layer centered up, it's going to automatically be set on our vanishing point for our image. If not, just click and drag on the circle to make sure the vanishing point snaps to your grid. Then I'll hold control, zoom out with my mouse wheel, and if I use the middle click, it's like a hand tool, and release. So now we're going to hover our mouse over the outer edge of the text layer, and that's going to turn our mouse pointer to the rotate tool. If I hold the shift key, it's going to constrain this along a single axis, and now I can click and drag and I'm just going to drag this until it's perfectly flat along that horizontal line there and release my mouse. So once I've done that, I'm going to hover my mouse over the flat portion there and you'll see my mouse pointer will change to what looks like the move tool. So now I'm going to click and drag that and that's just going to plop this in perspective perfectly on our pier here. The issue right now is that this is not the size I want it to be. It's a little small. So what I can do to increase the size is hold the control key that's going to constrain this to the Z axis. And now I can click and drag my mouse to the left and that will increase the size of this. If I release the control key, now I can drag it back and now it's too large. So hold control again and drag to the right. And now I can adjust this. One thing I do wish this had was like the little center crosshair so it would snap to the grid. So if you're a GIMP developer watching this, there's a feature idea for you. So there it's placed where I want it. Now I'll come over here, hit transform, and now we have a piece of text perfectly placed here in perspective. So obviously when you're using perspective tools in GIMP, a big problem is that you know, you've know you got it looking close, but because you didn't use any sort of official measurement, it's gonna look off to a lot of people if you don't get it perfectly right. This takes that portion out of the equation and it makes perfect perspective every time. So now what we're going to do is add texture to this to make it look like it's actually painted on the pier. To do that, come over to your image layer and you're going to duplicate that layer. Click and drag it to the top. I'm going to click on the drop down here for my layer modes and I'm going to scroll down to grain merge. Now we're going to create a layer mask from the question mark and to do that I'll click on this and alt click on that layer to create a selection from it. You can also go to layer, transparency, alpha 2 selection. And now come over here to the image, right click and go to add layer mask. And under initialize layer mask 2 I'll choose selection and click add. So that's going to mask out the uh, image layer there on the top to the shape of our question mark. So I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that. So we've got the textures overlaid, but there's not really any sort of sign that this is painted on there because none of the texture itself is on the white portion here of the text. So the first thing we need to do is we need to increase the size of the layer to match the size of the image. So on the question mark layer, we're gonna go to Layer, Layer to Image Size. Once we've done that, I'm going to hit the forward slash key on my keyboard and type bump map and double click on that. So here with the bump map, this is going to transfer textures from one layer to another. And so what I'll do is just click on this question mark and I'm going to double click on either one of the images here to select it. And then over here, there's a slider called depth. So now when I increase this, you'll see it's going to map the textures from this photo onto our text layer and it's going to make it look nice and uh, 3D there so it looks nice and realistic. So you can play around with the depth if you want more texture or less texture. So now I'll come over here and click OK. And the last thing I could do here if I wanted to really make this look realistic I can hold control zoom in with the mouse wheel. So on the question mark layer add a layer mask. We're going to change the layer mask to white full opacity and click add. Grab the paintbrush tool and we're going to swap the color there to black. And now I'm just going to click on here, hold the shift key 
and just draw out the areas here in the middle. But I actually want to turn the hardness down a little bit so that it blends a bit better. So with the hardness down, we should get a slightly nicer looking result. And if I hold control, zoom out, you can do it to these parts as well. But for the sake of time, I'll just leave it there. To hide the guides, we can hit control shift T. And now we have our text perfectly placed in perspective with texture. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can take an in-depth look at this tool in my GIMP Masterclass, and you can check out any of my links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.